Hello, welcome to this uh, next video. Um, I want to say tutorial there, but it's not. Uh, we're just going to have a look, quick look at what's new in uh, 7.4 of Substance Painter. So there's a few new things, um, mostly in the form of assets, but we've also got like uh, a detached feature, which we'll go through, I think, first, perhaps. Uh, so the first thing is, in our viewport, uh, previously, we could split it into 2D, 3D, or 3D only, or 2D only. Uh, but now, if you notice, let's put that back to 3D, we have a swap function, which I think was probably there anyway, I just never noticed. Uh, but we also have open in other window. So we can actually detach our 2D view, or our 3D view, um, and have it in a different monitor, which is terrific. Now we can have them both, and we don't have to choose, and we can really maximise you know our working space I, I'm only working on one monitor at the minute so it's not really helping uh, but I think F4 is the switch so you can switch the two windows between the two and switch as will and uh, I think that's great you know I, I can really see and I'm really contemplating putting my other monitor on uh, now uh, so that I could uh, you know work maximized in 3d and just have all my tools over off on one side especially if you've got like a big tablet you know like a drawing tablet you can really get you know massive space without having lots of property windows in your way so that's really great um, another thing then let me just close that and press F4 again is we've got a bunch of new tools now tools used to be uh, kind of a separate thing in substance but um, since a couple of versions ago they're all lumped into the brushes now so if I go into the brushes and at the top I'll type tools uh, you should find you've got some new ones in here so uh, let me just get rid of that and pop a paint layer on uh, so we've got this glitter party so we can just scatter glitter all over the place um, you know I don't particularly have a, a use for them uh, <laughs> I guess it'll depend on what you're up to um, we've got a glitter star Let's uh, get to a slightly different area. There we go. So we can uh, throw stars all over the place. That's quite nice. I quite like that. Uh, da -da, glitter dots. There we go. Just like little uh, polka dot uh, things. Um, and among those other things we have these zippers. So if I double click on this tool here I should get the zipper tool up. Uh, let's go in there and I can draw my zipper as I want I've been a bit indiscriminate there but there we go and of course uh, I think that was already there uh, we have zipper advanced all oh, this looks new I'd like a bit of new uh, so oh yeah there we go so now we've got a zipper that's got some uh, things around it let me delete that and start from scratch there we go just, just get that going let's try this on the front here take my size down a bit there we go there we have a zipper with some things an inexpertly drawn zipper I, uh, I grant you but a uh, zipper nonetheless uh, so one thing you do is uh, if you click at a point and then shift and move your mouse uh, you've got a hold shift uh, you can draw out a line so you can get a much less badly drawn zipper and of course we've got our ends here so we can pop an end on oops that's too small oh, nearly there oh so close there we go and we've got our start as well okay so a few new tools oh, that's way too small way too over I'll get it right in a bit you get the idea anyway okay so on top of that new content and uh, if you haven't been in here before all that will be new to you um, there's some quite fun ones in here I, I like the uh, the stitch ones they're great fun so if I draw this out you'll see I get a nice line of stitches uh, this one I think is uh, well either of these I think is terrific uh, so let me make that bigger and start to draw that out you'll see I get a nice line of stitches with a raised 
kind of uh, bump around it as if it's actually embedded in into uh, into fabric okay so other than the uh, these new uh, bits of content we have some other uh, pieces in the textures area and I believe that the majority of these are in the grunges so if I go into the grunge textures and just type in that uh, we've got some uh, grunge brushes all sorts of things and I'm just looking for someone I don't actually recognise. <laughs> this is my only way of finding them. Uh, I believe these ones down the bottom are new. So let me double click on that one, see if that helps. No, it's not going to help at all because I'm in a brush. Uh, let's delete that and open up a fill layer. So if I drag that into my base colour, there's my uh, new grunge. And of course, we've got all sorts of uh, bits down the bottom that help us to update and change it and mould it to what we want. Uh, there we go, let's update the tiling. Oh, I quite like that one actually, it's quite nice. I don't know why or what it reminds me of, but I like it. Uh, so let's try a different one. Uh, I believe, where is it? Oh, I've seen it when I was looking. Yeah, I think that one might be a new one. There we go. So yes, there's all sorts of new thing, new ones hidden in here and it's a question of really going through and finding them. Uh, I couldn't find a list myself. Uh, I'm sure there's one out there and if you find it point me in the right direction. Uh, but we have a bunch of new um, yeah, procedural stroke uh, bitmap uh, grunge maps to use. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it for, for this. There may be some back end things that I've missed uh, but they're you know the main uh, main features the most you know the biggest one for me i think is probably the split in the screens because you know that really helps that helps in productivity you know i work you know when uh, i'm in 2d 3d you know and i'm working on a big model you know i'm really running out of real estate you know i either have to minimize you know my palettes this size or my things this side to get to a stage where i can work on it but if I can now detach and go to a different window, brilliant. You know, I can keep them separate and have them visible at the same time. Okay, so uh, there's a few other things. Um, one of which is a new generator. So I've just added a layer to this. Let me get rid of that 3D view or 2D view rather. Um, and I'm going to add a black mask to this. No, I'm not. I'm going to add it straight to it. So let me right click on the material and I'm going to add a generator. And now under generators, we have inflate shrink wrap. And when I apply that, you'll see it kind of makes it look like um, it's got a shrink wrap around it and has been like vacuum sealed, if you like. And uh, what else have we got? Select and apply. We've got a vacuum version. Oh, that's the vacuum version that's the really vacuum version and uh, we have a tight one so other than that we've got uh, the opportunity to change our densities so you can up and down that we can raise our edges a little bit if we want to or bring them down uh, we can change the edge width uh, update the tightness and the ranges and the wrinkle scale there we go all sorts of options to play with and uh, down here you'd see it's all driven off the curvature map so you know make sure you bake your know, apps out nicely if you haven't got much of a curvature map i do suspect um it won't show up very well let me just change this to the curvature map and see what it looks like on this uh normal 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 curvature it's up here somewhere oh that's the channels there we go uh, so yes, see I've got a, you know, there's not much on this one, there's a lot of plain grey um, and around the edges we've got some whites. Let's go back to material. I suspect what it's doing is uh, where there's not much of a map, uh, it's not putting anything and where, you know, the grey map intersects with a white section, it's probably using some sort of fall off to uh, to generate that out. So there we go, we have a new generator, and I'm all for it, I love generator, and uh, it really make my life easy. <laughs> uh, so there's a couple more things to cover, and I shall talk to them uh, in the next
Okay, so uh, we have a couple of new materials as well. Now there are more new materials, and you might be able to spot them. Um, as you sort of slide up and down, you'll see a lot of familiar things. And at the bottom, we've got uh, our zipper advanced um, pieces. Uh, there's the tightening uh, things, which are part of some a couple of the other new tools. Let's have a look. Uh, where are we? So uh, there's some cords here somewhere, not the welds, not the zippers, no, can't see them. That could be my uh, <laughs> my list blindness. Anyway, that's not what I was really wanting to talk about. Um, so there's a couple of new tools which are sort of distinct uh, from that. We've got the scar here and we've got a pocket. So let me just add a fill in there, not a fill, a paint layer. And I've got the pocket selected and there we go. If I click that in, I get a new pocket. That's quite a nice pocket with stitching. Uh, handy for, you know, getting things going. Uh, I perhaps wouldn't necessarily use the colour with, you know, what I'm doing. I might turn that off and then use the underlying colour of my material to, you know, to, to sort that out. Uh, so let's undo those. So we also have a scar. So the scar is basically what it says. It's a scar, and you can paint and draw with it, and it looks like a uh, yeah, a skin scar essentially. And I believe that if I type in skin up here, uh, it will be one of the uh, basic uh, skin brushes that you get. So let me add in uh, a fill and pop in some leg skin perhaps uh, let's put that into material mode there we go uh, now on you know if I'm painting a character I can come in and pop in a a brush and then you know pop a scar on essentially and you'll see that work works quite well with the underlying skin and we've got kind of two uh, stitch marks across it as if it's been stitched and is uh, scarred over yeah pretty nice Okay, so there are a few new materials in here. Not all of them, um, you know, you'll use as a material. It'll be used as part of a tool, uh, but there are a couple in here. Okay, so yes, uh, it, I mean, if anyone finds the full list of, a of new assets, um, feels free to let me know. <laughs> I'm just uh, uh, doing it by feel at the minute because I'm just, you know, seeing the difference between what I remember and what, uh, you know, what I don't. Okay, so what else have we got? Um, there's a colour space. Uh, it's not something I use very often, but I'm going to go through it and uh, perhaps it will resonate with you. So I will talk to you then. Okay, so colour management. So colour management is something apparently that hasn't been in um, Substance Painter, but now it includes it. So where we can access that is we can go on our new project if we go file new and select my cube here uh, we have all of the usual options uh, but then we have this color management down here now if we slide down a bit so I've got color management legacy currently working color space uh, linear srgb chrominance is that how you spell it I don't know we'll say it uh, or we can switch that to uh, an open color IO so again we've got configuration files for substance and aces or you can import your own custom um, file uh, and that might be you know if you're working with a client or something and they want you to work in a particular color space you know you can then integrate this into your uh, into your project workflow and I deeply suspect that will save you a lot of um, tweaking of images outside of substance uh, so yes so what have we got? We've got our working colour space, we have linear, uh, we can change it for each of our uh, different types of image, so I could go sRGB on one, uh, linear on another, I don't know why, um, etc, etc. Um, we also have substance materials, we can set it for that as well, and we have our export colour spaces, so 8-bit, 16-bit and floating point. Um, if you've got an existing project that you want to convert to uh, a colour managed project, you can simply go to Edit and Project Configuration 
and under color management you've got all the same settings so you can go to legacy or color io uh, you can select your uh, config file and then set your values down here if necessary okay so i i'm by no means an expert in color management um, but you know some render engines i guess work in different color spaces to others and depending upon the target you know you may be better off working in one rather than another i know you know i've used modo a lot and uh, I, i've had all sorts of grief with color space <laughs> in that respect um but you know that's a new feature i didn't want to miss it just because i don't particularly understand it i wanted to go over you know something okay so um we have one last thing to do and that's an update to the auto unwrap so i'll talk to you in a second